Okay, so here I have an empty scene, and what we're going to do in this first lecture is we are going to create the grass blade. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do for all this is I'm actually going to put this into a subnetwork. All right, so I'm just going to hit tab on the keyboard and drop down a subnet, and this is going to be called our grass uh, clump uh, geo. Let's just call it that for now. Right, let's remove that extra underscore, and then inside of this subnet you notice that we have all these inputs now i'm just going to select them all and hit shift l on the keyboard to organize them and just push them off to the side for now i'm not really going to use any of the the inputs for this particular case uh, because at the end we're going to turn this into an hda uh, that way we can reuse it over and over again all right so let's focus on just creating the grass blade so i'm going to hit tab on the keyboard and drop down another geometry node because what we're going to do is we're basically going to create a little pipeline here all right, so we're just going to create a bunch of these geo nodes here. And each step of the way, or each step in the pipeline, we're going to have a geo node for. All right, so this is going to be called our grass uh, blade, like so. And this will be called our grass uh, texture sheet, I believe. Obviously, I'm going to update this as we go through all the videos in this series. And then this is going to be called the grass clump. All right, and then we'll probably have one more for uh, just gathering everything together. So we'll call this final, something like that. All right, so let's focus on just the grass blade here. And what I'm going to do is drop down a line. And this line is basically going to be the main bone or the stock of the, the grass blade. So we'll just call this the main line. All right. And we're also going to need another line. And this line is going to be our profile. So this will be profile line. Cool, and then this particular line actually needs to be um, set in the middle on the x-axis. All right, so uh, what I want to do is point it in the x-direction first, and I want to get the length. Okay, so I'm copying the length here. So I'm going to say copy parameter. All right, it allows me to create relationships between these particular values here inside of Houdini, which is great, super powerful. Um, and I'm going to right click on the origin in the X direction because we are pointing in the X direction and I'm going to paste that relative reference and what that does is it sets up the relationship so as I change the length of the line you can see it gets offset in X so I want it to actually sit in the middle of the world so I'm just going to multiply this distance value by 0.5 and we need to subtract it also so let's do a subtraction and there we go so now as I change the length of that line it stays right in the middle perfect and that is exactly what we want to do okay and so um, I also want to add another point because I want a point in the center here like so cool all right so let's do a quick uh, sweep all right so you can see the sweep requires two curves we need the backbone and we need the cross section and our backbone is our main line there and there's our cross section which is the profile all right, perfect. So now we actually have a swept curve. And to actually turn this into a piece of geometry, we need to go into the sweep node, go into the output tab, and say skin with auto closure, like so. Cool. Now, this is great and all, but we actually want to create the shape of a grass blade. And so that means we're going to need some more resolution on our main line here. And to do that, we're just going to increase the points that we have on our line all right cool so now we have some geometry to work with here all right so with this all laid out we need to do a couple things now uh, before the sweep before we process the sweep we want to process some values on the main line and we also want to process some information on the profile line okay so uh, let's go and uh, create a wrangle node because what i want to do is i want to provide some sort of gradient value so as we go from zero uh, all the way up to the number of points here, I want to create a gradient. And this gradient will allow me to basically shape the shape of the grass blade, okay? Because I'll be able to change that length of the profile line at each point of the main line there. All right, so to do this, what we want to do is go into that wrangle node and we're going to type in some vex, okay? So I'm going to say that um, gradient, so float gradient, all right? And I'm using float here inside of vex. Uh, be, to make it a local variable, all right, if I wanted to actually expose it to the geometry spreadsheet over here, uh, I would do something like at f or f at gradient like so, 
And if I just initialize it, you can see now I have a gradient value over here. All right, so let's actually leave that in the geometry spreadsheet so we can actually see the values changing as we uh, type in the little, little bit of math that we're going to do here. So uh, what I want to do is I want to take the current point number, all right, and I want to divide it by the number of points, so numpt. Now, if you're new to VEX, I'd highly recommend watching the Intro to VEX series on the IndiePixel YouTube channel. This will definitely get you up and running quickly with uh, using VEX. All right, but um, I highly encourage you to follow along. All this stuff is also inside of that uh, Intro to VEX series. Okay, so I'm going to cast both these to a float so I get a decimal value. And what I want to do is I actually want to subtract one from our number of points there. And we actually need to put that inside a parenthesis, so we subtract one from it before we cast it. And the reason why I'm doing that, so if you look at the result over here, we have a value now that goes from 0 up 0, so 0 is down here. Let's actually turn this guy on there, so 0 is right there. And we get a value of 1 when we get all the way up to 15, so now we have a gradient value. Okay? And if I were to take away this 1 here, you can see that we get a value from 0 to... 0.9375 and that's because this is all zero based right so it starts at zero not one so we need to subtract one so we actually take that into account cool all right so now we have zero to one awesome okay um, now what we want to do is we want to provide some sort of scale value okay so um, I'm going to basically pump a value into the built-in variable called p scale. All right, so this basically comes with all the points. If there's a p scale value, the sweep node will pick it up and use it. So this p scale is going to be equal to uh, ch ramp, right? Stands for channel ramp. Okay, this is something that we can expose to users so they can change the shape on their own. And what I want to do is I want to pump or give it a name first, and we're just going to call this shape, and I'm going to give it that gradient value, like so. So now you can see if I turn on my sweep, we don't actually have our shape anymore. And that's because we haven't exposed this ramp right here. So all I need to do is just hit this little button right here to create the spare parameter. And voila, we now have a way. Let's turn off our displays here. We now have a way to shape the grass blade. All right, so we can hit this little down button right here to expand this curve. And what we can do is we can start to change the shape of our grass blade. And so what I want is something that goes, you know, from, I'm going to pull this guy all the way down here. I want to grab this guy right here. So that's going to be right around there. I'm going to create a really rough shape of a grass blade here. Something like that is pretty good. And shape it a little more. And then what I'm going to do uh, to kind of round it out a little bit more is I'm going to select all these. So I'm just going to hold down the control key on the keyboard. And just click on each one of these little buttons down there. And what I want to do is uh, select the B-spline. Now you can mess around with any of these. I'm just going to use B-spline because it gives me a nice round curve right there. And now what I can do is, you know, really start to play around with the shape a little bit more. All right, that's pretty cool. You know, something like that. I think will work just fine. Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Cool. All right, so that takes care of our main grass blade shape. Now what I want to do is I also want to give this a little bit um, of a fold, okay? And to do that, I need to take the two outer points. So let's take a look at this here on the profile. Now this is the reason why we added three points, because I want to select both these outer points here. Uh, procedurally, I might add, I'm not going to do it by hand, all right? So procedurally select those two points, and I want to move them outwards, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, group by range here. And I'm going to set this to points. All right. And I'm going to type in $OS here. And what this means is it's going to pick up the name of the node for the group. So now I can just name this node here. I can call this uh, outer uh, points. And now this particular group right here, all right, is named outer points because we're using dollar OS there. And you could verify this by hitting this little button right here and going up to this window here, hitting this little cogwheel and checking out the outer points group. So now we have this outer points group right there. Okay. 
And what I want to do is I want to take the start and end and just pump them up. And you'll notice that we only have the middle point selected now. So I'm going to invert that range and I get the outer points. Very cool. All right, so now I've got the outer point. So at this point, I can drop down a transform node like so and select my outer points group. And now I can move it in Z, right? So I'll just move it out a little bit. Now, if I were to hook that into the sweep like so, all right, if I were to hook that into the sweep node, you'll see now we have a little bit of a fold. And it looks like it, it did work. We're getting the fold, but in the wrong direction. And that's because our main line doesn't have any normals, all right, or any sort of direction uh, capability. And so uh, what we can do is we can drop down a polyframe. Let's do this here. So there's a couple of ways you could do this. So I might as well cover that. So one, the one thing we could do is drop down another transform node over here for the profile line. And we can actually rotate these uh, along the X direction and that will fix it. Uh, or I could drop down a polyframe node here and there it is, polyframe. All right, so I'm just gonna toggle that off there. And you'll notice that right off the bat, it's now working perfectly also. So I think uh, let's just keep the polyframe there. I think that'll work for me for now. Okay, perfect. So that basically takes care of the fold. All right, there's a ton of things you could do with all of that. Uh, you can add some noise in there, um, but I'm just gonna keep this really basic just for time's sake. Uh, because there's a lot to, to show in this whole process. I really just want to give you kind of a general basic overview of how, you know, this whole pipeline works to create, you know, texture sheets and uh, grass clumps and um, then export out all the LODs automatically and then import it into Unity and everything's already hooked up for us. So I wanted to show how to do that. All right. Great. So this is working uh, really, really well for us. And so what I want to do now at this point is I want to bend this. So if I drop down a bend, there we go, bend node. All right, and so just so you guys know, I'm using 17.0.435 currently. All righty, and what I'm going to do is go into this bend node and I need to make sure that the, the uh, direction of the bend itself is pointing in the, the correct uh, direction. So the capture direction is going to be in one, like so. Cool. So you can see now we're getting this gradient that's going appropriately from bottom to top there. And what I can do is I can visualize all this, like so. All right. And we can also change this bend capture length. Uh, let's actually add a little bit of bend in here. And what I need to do is change this up vector, I think, to Z. Yeah, there we go. And let's change the bend. So now we're able to bend our grass blade. Cool. All right, so uh, I think what I actually want to do is put this on the X direction, just for this one, because remember, we're going to be putting this onto a texture sheet. And so I, I really just want to bend these side to side because a, a forward and backward bend wouldn't do anything in a texture sheet. And these are all just going to be flat. All right, so I just wanted the ability to, to uh, change the bend here. That way I can get variations of grass blades. Cool. So I'm just going to kind of leave it bent there for a little bit. That'll be a kind of its default bend. All right, and then I want to drop down a uh, uh, color value or a color node. And this color node, let me actually turn the visualize fall off here. So the color node in here allows us to create a ramp from an attribute. Now, if you notice, we still have this gradient value right here on all of our points, which is perfect because now we can just type in gradient here and you'll notice that we are getting a gradient from black to white. And you'll notice that one side of the, the geometry, let's go back to the bend node here, um, is a little bit darker than the other. Right, this one's really bright, and that's just because this is the back face. So if you want to actually view that, hit D on the keyboard, go to the Optimize tab and say Remove Back Faces, and now I can't see the backside. So that means that we need to take that into account here. So what I'm going to do is uh, drop down a Reverse node, 
put this off to the side like so. So now that's reversing the, the direction. Cool. And then I just want to merge those two together. So now I have a geometry for the front and the back. So now I want to merge node here like so. And I'll pump that into that bend node. And there we go. So now we've got both sides visible. Perfect. All right, so then this is basically where we go and you know assign our grass color. So let's go do that. So we're just going to make something really quick here. I'm not going to be try, try to be too um, accurate about all this, but I want to set something up that's relatively pleasing here. Let me make it just a different color slightly off there. And let's actually kind of clamp this down a little bit. So maybe just the bottom's more brown there. And maybe the tip is a little bit, you know, younger. There we go. Like so. So it's a little bit more of a kind of an aqua, aqua green kind of color there. All right. So, yeah, you can go and add as many of those as you want. And I think I'm going to add a little bit more resolution to our main line. There we go. Cool. Because remember, we're going to actually turn this into a texture. So you could have as much geometry in there as you want. Awesome. All right. So now we have our grass blade with all the basic features that we need. We can bend it. We can change the colors, change the resolution. And we're going to leave it normalized uh, to a, a scale of 1 right now. If you notice, if we go to our front view, we're just going from 0 to 1 on the grid. And that's perfect because we just want to keep everything normalized. All right, so last thing I'm going to do is drop down a null node here, and we'll just call this out blade geo. And we'll keep all this capitalized. Makes it easier to find. Cool. All right, so I'm going to close out this video, and what we're going to do next is get these guys onto a texture sheet. Okay, thanks so much.